Is sim racing worth it? Can it improve your real life driving skills? And just how do you get into the hobby? These are some of the most asked questions about sim racing and in this video I'm going to be answering them in depth. So make sure you stay tuned and I'm sure you'll be raring to get on the track by the end of this video. So firstly, is sim racing worth it? The short answer is yes, but you're probably wanting to know why. Although sim racing can seem impossible to get into first, with all the expensive hardware and games, I can honestly say that I haven't had any regrets over jumping into the hobby just over five years ago. I started from humble beginnings, using the de facto starter wheel from Logitech and one of the cheapest sim racing titles. Over the last half decade, I have experienced most things that a wheel controller has to offer, from high octane races to slow haulage simulators. There has never been a dull moment or a lack of things to do with a wheel. Racing is addictive. If you've ever played a competitive arcade racer such as Trackmania, you'll know that squeezing out the milliseconds can almost become an obsession. This carries over into sim racing, but not only are you trying to improve your speed, you're also trying to improve your racecraft, from learning how to overtake and defend, to avoid crashes, and developing your sixth sim racing sense that will enable you to zone out and do all of this on autopilot. There is always something to improve on, and the skill ceiling is practically infinite, and you'll be entertained for hundreds, if not thousands, of hours. Unlike many other genres of games, sim racing is extremely action packed. You have to be 100% focused on every single corner and every single car around you. Even FPS games have lulls in the action. In sim racing, if you make a mistake, you'll know about it immediately and if you do something right, you'll have an extreme sensation of satisfaction that will drive you to work on improving your racecraft further. Like I said, there is an infinite skill ceiling, and many sim racers will tell you that the fun comes from seeing yourself improve rather than winning. Winning races is just a bonus really. And if you ever do get sick of circuit racing, there are a plethora of other genres you can use your wheel for. You can drift, cruise, take on the Nordschleife Touristenfahrten, drive across Europe or America in a haulage truck, or you can even farm crops or play arcade racing games. My point is, there is more than one use for your wheel. It's not all about sim racing. In fact, I don't even sim racing that much comparatively to all the other things I do with my wheel. I mostly drift mountain roads, cruise the Japanese highways and lap the Nordschleife on open track days. So is buying a wheel worth it? Absolutely. Sim racing and sim driving in my opinion is the greatest genre of gaming. It's possibly the most realistic and skills learnt can even translate over to real life. And if you ever need a break from the racing, there is so, so much more you can do. So that leads us on nicely to the next question. Can sim racing improve your real life driving? I would consider myself a heavy petrol head in real life as well as in simulators. I regularly go for pleasure drive and have done track days in my daily driver. I was sim racing before I even got my license. And I have to say that I truly believe sim racing has helped me massively. From basic things such as wheel control and gear shifting, to more advanced things such as crash avoidance and controlling the car in a performance manner. As soon as I stepped into a real life car for the first time at 17 years old, I felt at home even though I had only been sim racing for one year at that point. I felt relatively comfortable driving, and the only thing that made me nervous were the other cars on the road. I could drive effectively and flew through my practical driving lessons and tests with ease. After a year of driving, I bought my second car, a rear wheel drive roadster, and I immediately wanted to put what I've learnt from sim racing to use in real life. From drifting in car parks to toge driving on some great British B roads, toge in inverted commas. Sim racing has taught me all of the correct muscle memories to drive in this manner, and I could easily control the car in a drift or correct oversteer. I was able to drive as close as the limit as possible on public roads pretty safely. Of course, those are always the famous last words of someone that is about to put their car into a ditch after getting too confident, but after two years of driving a relatively high horsepower car and hooning it around like a yob, 
I've never put myself or my car in any dangerous situations and I owe that to sim racing. As I mentioned earlier, I took my car to a track day at Silverstone. Naturally, I did a lot of practice in a similar car on Silverstone in a Sesso Corsa. Just how did they compare? Pretty well, I'd say. I had already been trained by sim racing and everything was almost instinctual at that point. I was looking far up the track as possible for the next corner. I knew all of the corners and where to apex well and I could almost immediately put in a pretty decent lap for a beginner. Although track driving in real life is pretty close to sim racing, there are some stark differences. For example, most of the feedback you get through the wheel in sim racing is mostly given to you through your seat in the form of g-force. Instead of feeling oversteer through the wheel, the g-forces of oversteer are exerted into your body. This can take some getting used to and it is quite hard to begin with. But overall I'd say that sim racing can definitely improve your real life driving. Racing drivers practice on simulators for a reason. So then the final question is how do I get into sim racing? The sim racing world can seem very daunting at first, with expensive peripherals and seemingly extortionate games. Well, for me it was pretty simple. I picked up the beginner wheel, the G920, for around 250 Great British Pounds. This included a wheel, pedal and shifter. The next part is optional, but you'll also need a wheel stand for this setup. I wouldn't recommend mounting your wheel to your desk. In my opinion, they aren't nearly sturdy enough and the seating position is all wrong. If your rig doesn't feel comfy, you won't enjoy sim racing. This is something that I had to find out the hard way. For the first few years of sim racing before I got a proper cockpit, it was almost uncomfortable to sim race and I didn't enjoy it nearly as much as I did after I got a proper seating position. Anyway, I picked up the Wheelstand Pro for around 100 Great British Pounds. Of course there are cheaper options than these, and you can probably find some good deals secondhand on something like eBay. I can wholly recommend buying the G920 first, as you really need to test the waters with sim racing before you jump in fully. If you enjoy sim racing, great, you can upgrade to something more expensive like a Thrustmaster or even a Fanatec. But if you don't like sim racing, you can always call it quits with your wallet still intact. VR is still a hot topic in sim racing. Personally, I only sim race in VR. For me, it adds a completely different level of immersion. You are literally sitting in the car. You can place the tyres any way you like and you can look around the cockpit and check your mirrors without pressing a button. It's all very natural. Personally, I think VR is a must have for any sim racer. I can't sim race seriously without it these days. I bought my Oculus Rift for around 350 Great British Pounds. That may seem like a lot for a beginner sim racer, but once you start getting into it more seriously, you will crave the immersion it offers. As for the best beginner sim racing game, it has to go to Assetto Corsa. It's a few years old, but it is still one of my favourite racing sims by far. You can get it really cheap these days too. I think I saw the base game for just 5 great British pounds at one point, and you'll also want the DLCs too, as these add much more variety. Assetto Corsa is a great sim, and with all the DLC you can partake in a plethora of motorsports. From Formula 3 racing at Spa, to a Nordschleife Tourist Track Day, which is one of my favourites. It is a great amount of fun, and that is before we even mention modding. Mods have almost certainly kept Assetto Corsa alive all these years. It has an absolutely huge modding community that are constantly upgrading the game. From a better menu system, to graphics, weather systems, cars and tracks, there will almost never be a shortage of things for you to try out. I originally bought a Seto Corsa for drifting and slowly branched out into other genres of motorsport. Like I already mentioned, you can cruise the Japanese highways, rally drive on snowy mountain roads, or take it slow and cruise around the Scottish Highlands. Seto Corsa literally has it all and I seriously recommend you pick up this sim first. Once you get into sim racing more seriously, AC has a huge community of league races to sink your teeth into if you want a more competitive experience. After you settle into sim racing, there are even more great sims to try out. Assetto Corsa Competizione 
ACC is the successor to Assetto Corsa. It is a GT3 and GT4 simulator that focuses on driver ratings. So you'll find much more serious racing here in public lobbies. It is an extremely immersive sim, but for me the lack of variety really puts me off of it. But if you're a hardcore fan of GT3 or 4, this will be your go-to sim. iRacing iRacing is very expensive for any new sim racer. They charge you a monthly subscription fee and on top of that you have to buy cars and tracks. I love iRacing but now I just refuse to pay for it. Over the season it really does start to add up. I think I spent something like £200 on iRacing in just one season. The racing is very fun as everyone is taking it seriously on iRacing. However, I cannot justify the price when we have sims like Assetto Corsa on the table. However, I'd recommend you try iRacing out because there really is nothing like it. Automobilist 2 is a new entry onto the sim racing market. Personally, I do not like the physics in this simulator. They feel very arcade-like, but the one thing this game does well is immersion. The graphics are fantastic and the weather systems are completely unmatched. It's a good sim to own and they are constantly updating it with free cars and tracks. However, the multiplayer is a bit lacklustre, but that shouldn't put you off. If you enjoy racing against AI or just hot lapping on your own, this one is definitely for you. Project Cars 2 is the most arcade-like sim on this list. It offers a good mixture between arcade and sim racing and is even playable on a gamepad. It's a good title for anyone looking to ease themselves into the sim racing world, with forgiven physics and a large selection of cars that are regularly used in random pickup races. It's a good title for anyone just getting into the hobby. So that about concludes it. Hopefully after watching this video you are raring to get into the sim racing world. If I didn't cover a specific question you had, feel free to leave it in the comments. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe for more sim racing content, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and share. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.